St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from St. Catharines, Ontario, in Thanksgiving. She asks for prayers for improved health and for self-sufficiency. The second is an anonymous donor in memory of Francesco Gabriele and Fiorina and Vincenzo Tiano. On behalf of everyone across Canada participating in this celebration, our sincere thanks to both our donors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you and by you be brought to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the whole people of Israel, saying, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving your, the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish you shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give you to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Happy are they who hope in the Lord. Happy are they who hope in the Lord. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. Planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, 
and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The Lord be with you. And also with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples and sternly ordered them not to tell anyone. The Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to them all, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout the first several centuries of church history, Lent, which was much shorter then than it is now, was focused on the immediate preparation of those who were to be baptized at the Easter Vigil. It involved prayer and fasting and a deepening sense of Christian faith, as this had come to be summed up in brief formularies like our Apostles' Creed. In the medieval period, when there were few adult baptisms, Lent took on its more and less, more or less, classical form. Fixed at 40 days in memory of the time that Jesus fasted in the wilderness before beginning of his public ministry, its central concern became that of penance, of doing penance, of making up or offering satisfaction for one's sins and the sins of the world. More recently, our understanding of Lent has tended to return to some degree to that of the early church. One reason for this is our rediscovery of the Easter Vigil as a privileged time for baptism, especially for adults prepared through the RCIA program, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. At Easter, moreover, we are now all invited to renew our baptismal promises as a way of entering more deeply into the saving mystery of Jesus' death and resurrection. In a wonderfully creative way, Paul, in his letter to the Romans, brought out the connection between the rite of baptism and Jesus' death and resurrection. All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, he says, were baptized into his death. We have been buried with him by baptism into death 
So just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might walk in newness of life. At that time, most of those being baptized were adults. The ritual ordinarily involved an actual immersion in water. Paul saw the going down of converts into the water as a symbol of their going down into death with Christ, while their rising up from it evoked his rising from the dead. Early baptismal fonts, which were large enough to permit this form of baptism, were called tombs and wombs, places of death and places of life. Lent is understood today above all as a period of preparation for Easter and for the unique way in which at that time we celebrate the Paschal mystery, the mystery of salvation through the death and resurrection of Jesus. That two-sided single event has been recognized from the beginning of Christianity as the key and focus of what God has done for us in Christ. The authors of the New Testament compare the Paschal mystery to the Exodus, the liberation of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, and to the covenant established by God with them at Sinai. In Christ, God has brought about a new Exodus, a new liberation, a liberation this time of the whole of humanity, a liberation from sin and alienation and from all that separates us from God and at the deepest level from one another. This liberation, like the earlier one, has been brought to a climax in a covenant, a new and eternal covenant sealed in the blood of Jesus. These are the great realities that the church celebrates and brings to bear on us as individuals and communities in every sacrament and especially in baptism and the Eucharist. They are the same realities that we recall and celebrate in the annual cycle of the liturgical year and especially in the great triduum the solemn three days that mark the end of Holy Week and of Lent. The scripture readings for daily Mass during Lent are chosen to help us prepare for these celebrations and for the renewal of baptism and its promises, which is so central to them. Today's first reading taken from near the end of the book of Deuteronomy, contains some of the last words addressed by Moses to the Israelites. While he is on the point of death, they are on the verge of entering into the promised land. In order to remind them of how they have come to this point in their history, Moses recalls all that God has done for them, as well as their commitments to him. His major concern is that they remain faithful. If they do, he says, all will be well with them. If, however, they turn away from God and the path he has laid out for them, disaster will overtake them. I have said before you today, Moses declares, life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of God by loving him and walking in his ways, he adds, you will live, but if you turn away from him, you will perish. Choose life, Moses urges them. Choose obedience and love and fidelity so that you may inherit the promises God made to Abraham and his descendants. Baptism, like the other sacraments, is a gift of God, an act of pure grace, in it, he brings to bear on us the healing and renewing power of the life and death of Jesus. For that power to have its effect on our life, we must accept it, freely enter into it, try to live in accordance with it, 
St. Augustine once said that although God made us without us, he will not save us without us. For those of us who were baptized as infants, our response to it slowly unfolded in the course of our childhood and youth. For those baptized as adults, a good part of their, that process took place before and at the time of baptism. All of us, whether baptized as children or as adults, are called to deepen our response to its gifts throughout our lives. The renewal of baptismal promises at Easter involves a rejection of evil and sin and of all that leads to them and a reaffirmation of faith in God as a mystery of Father, Son, and Spirit. Such faith cries out for a way of life that corresponds to it. The season of Lent invites us to think about and meditate on these truths and to renew our commitment to a life modeled on and inspired by the teaching and example of Jesus. The more we enter into the spirit of Lent, the more will we experience the renewal of hope and faith and love that is the intended fruit of our Easter celebrations. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs for all of us that our celebration of Lent this year will help us to live more deeply the gifts of our baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord be our prayer. For children throughout the world who suffer from malnutrition and famine, that those who can will reach out to them in their need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord be our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Regard with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts by sending down on them your spirit as the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and taught, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our, your, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of Thomas Merton's. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I'm following your will does not mean that I'm actually doing so but I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I'm doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the blessing of your heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech you, Almighty God, that they may always be for us a source both of pardon and of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to two donors. The first, an anonymous donor from St. Catharines, Ontario, and the second, an anonymous donor. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, just call our office at one 888 383-6277 for details.